Hello friends, it is I, self-critical automaton, and it is time once again for me to try and do this peculiar occupation of streaming video games. I've been a busy little bee, I've been working very hard today, and so I deserve to sit down and play some fine-ass video games. But do you know what the most important step towards playing a video game is? It's remembering to plug in your controller, which you unplugged because you were doing backups of various material earlier. Controller, functional. Good, that's the first step. All right, the second step is to learn how to play video games. I'm kidding, I already know how to do that. I'm super good at it, sort of. Most of the time, I'm rambling. Anyway, so I'm gonna dive in, and I hope you enjoy coming with me on what is the end of an adventure. I don't remember where I left off uh, last time I was playing this, because it was months ago at this point. But I do know I had reached the final boss, and I have also, in the intervening time, discovered that the final boss is... Uh... Oh, what was I doing? Why was I here? I do not know. Uh, anyway, there is a, there are secret bosses that you can do after the final boss uh, by various mechanisms, and uh, I am going to go kill the final boss, and then continue after in the sort of post-game to go fight the other bosses. You achieve various different endings depending on what you do. I'll have a discussion of those at some point also, but uh, not just yet. Anyway, I have been incredibly busy today. I've just realised that choosing to call myself a busy little bee is incredibly appropriate given this is... Uh, this is uh, Bug Souls, the insects video game. Anyway, I haven't played this in literally like two months, so... Uh, it's going to be an interesting experience to dive straight into fighting the final boss. Off the back of, you know, zero fucking gameplay. Can I remember how to play? Dunno. I mean, I seem to be doing alright so far, but these are low tier enemies. Not exactly a, a challenge for a doughty little insect as myself. Anyway, uh, oh, fuck off. Anyway, I am going to go have at least one or two tries on the final boss. If my ass is repeatedly kicked, I'm going to go fight in the arena and see if I can finish the final arena uh, challenge. And that will give me a little bit more experience with which I can remember how to play this delightful and extremely good video game that I like a lot. I may disappear for brief two-minute breaks a few times throughout this uh, episode. Episode? It's not an episode, it's a stream. Because I, uh, very cleverly have a stew, a stewin, off in the kitchen. Huh, can I save my money somehow or am I going to have to lose it all terribly? Is there even anything left for me to spend it on? Actually, maybe I should go do the DLC stuff. Well, I'm, I'm here now. I may as well give it a go. Let's descend into the- Hi, Wuxfrev! Uh, let's descend into the Yonic Inferno. You know, I think uh, not playing this for two months right before the final boss was perhaps a little bit of a mistake, just with regards to the sort of like stakes and uh, import of marching through this strange location. Because, um, I don't know, it's a little bit, uh, what's the word? It's not underwhelming, it's uh, like it's a tonal mismatch because I haven't got the same built up to it that I had previously. Hello, acrylic. Uh, since you live in my house, please make sure that you occasionally go and stir my delicious beef stew, which is a bubblin and a bubblin, and rattle in its lid away. Not this second necessarily, just in general. Oh, that's right, I can dodge through things now.
I fully expect to get my shit wrecked, incidentally. Oh, hey, he can parry. Interesting. Yeah, this is going to be a few tries, I think. A few tries until I either beat him or give up and go practice somewhere else, at any rate. Is what I mean. I should probably look at my... Uh, Badges, or whatever they're called. I wonder if there's any windows in which I can safely heal in this fight. Maybe the, uh... Oh, right. Yeah, that probably is one, if I time it right. You can tell I'm focused because I'm not making dumb jokes. Okay, phase two, here we go. I'm sure his behaviour all has some kind of intense thematic meaning, which would make sense to me if I had played this game more recently, instead of... Uh, you good there, buddy? Instead of not playing it for however many goddamn months it's been. Oh, shit. There's something delightfully creepy about that animation. The energy of a puppet with severed strings being lifted up. There's a reason I don't play bullet hell games. <laughs> Although I do seem to be handling it acceptably. What is he doing? I'm I always get worried when he's off screen because I don't know what he's doing. I hear you, buddy. I've had nights like that, too. I say to the avatar of all chivalric virtues, as he slowly diliquesces into orange goop. Hey, did you know words are fun?
think maybe he's on his last legs. That was significantly easier than I expected. Is he done? No, final... There's got to be another one, right? Final phase. Oh, okay. No, we're eating him now. Flashbacks to the end of Dark Souls. I suspect that we have just partaken of exactly the same ritual transaction as ends that game. Interesting. I enjoyed this game. I normally, I normally uh, save like my my overall last thoughts on the game for the credits. But I'm going to keep playing this because there's bosses I can go back and beat after the end, uh, including the secret final, final, final boss. That was that was a lot easier than I expected. Uh, it's definitely a lot easier than I found it when I when I was last playing this game. So um, the old magic. I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but but one of the old sorceries I've discovered in the world um, is that if you are stuck on something in a game, don't play it for a little while, come back, play it again, it will be easy. It's, uh, it's remarkable. I mean, I haven't gotten that much better at games in the two months since I was last playing this, like... I have gotten extremely better at games in the last few years. I didn't really get much better at games at all over the course of, like, 2010 to 2020. And then between 2020 and now, I've just, like, exponential increase in my gaming capabilities. Like, like in 2019, or 2018, maybe, I can't remember when it came out, Sekiro broke me. I say this a lot, but, like, it's one of the only times a game has been so difficult I had to stop playing it. And I came back to it a year or two later, and I found it a very, like, it was difficult, but it was very satisfying, and it wasn't, and I just, like, finished it, and that was done, so, you know. Um, and uh, I went back to it again this year, and I just, like, aced it over a weekend, like, so it's interesting how that works. Anyway, but, like, my thoughts on, on Hollow Knight are really just that, like, it's absolutely lovely. Um... I think it pulls off something very special with the way it blends the tone of all of the different artistries that go into it. The visual art, the music, even the even the, the level design and the area design and the writing all kind of blend together into this perfect whole. Um, perfect whole, probably, probably the title for the archive upload of this on YouTube. <laughs> uh, although I'll have forgotten it by the time I get around to it. Um, but I do think that it's possibly a weakness how closely it treads in the footsteps of Dark Souls. You know, people make a lot of comparisons to this game, between this game and Dark Souls, and it has exactly the same themes. Like, they share exactly the same themes. You know, the Miyazakian obsession with the cyclical nature of reality and the cycles that exist in things, and... Stagnation being the great enemy that causes all, or most, you know, terrible things in the world. Um, you know, the grandeur of a fallen place. Steel soul mode, no shade, no reviving, death is permanent, the ultimate challenge. Yeah, I don't think I will. I, I don't think I want to try and beat the game on one life. Um, because I'm clumsy enough that I will throw myself into a hole and die. If I start, can I pick up where I was? Oh, interesting, okay. Oh, it looks like- okay, so it just gives me a save right before I beat the boss. Okay, fair enough then. Which means that I should go tidy up some stuff. Um, I need to figure out how to crack open the egg I suspect has the king in it, or the king's corpse, or whatever it was. 
Um, yeah, the whole insect society thing is really delightful and it works really well because it's not, it's not really kind of... You know, the game doesn't beat you over the head with the idea that these are bug people, get it? Bug people, bug people. It just kind of presents this society as any as a as a human society might be presented in a similar similar game with a similar narrative. Where am I even going? Uh, I want to go to the train station. Well, like I said, I think it's a bit a bit much to completely retread Dark Souls, but like, I don't see the I don't see why that's a Dark Souls hatery opinion to have. Dark Souls was brilliant. Retreading it is a little bit weak when you could instead be doing something, you know, you could you could build on that and, and do something new. Um, on the other hand, if you're going to copy something, why not copy something brilliant and revolutionary? But yeah, I do think... The fact that it has its standard ending, or the default ending, or whatever, is exactly the same. Exactly the same arc, ex ending in exactly the same way as Dark Souls is a bit is a bit rich, I think. Oh, I don't want to go to the resting grounds, I want to go to the other place. <sighs> that you have this kind of divinely ordained goal. The way it... I will admit, the way, it, the way that it progresses, uh, at least, is... What? what? Wait, hang on, where the hell is... Where am I trying to go? I want to go to Kingdom's Edge, how do I get there? Oh, there's no train station, okay. Okay. I guess if I go down the lift from here, that might be the easiest route. But yeah, um... Dark Souls involves being kind of tricked you know, lied to on a grand cosmic scale in order to persuade you without you ever even realizing that you have been persuaded to destroy yourself in the service of someone else's goals. Goals that are arguably uh, highly detrimental to you um, and highly, very, you know, very much for the benefit of someone else. But the alternate take on it they have in this game is really interesting to me. This kind of almost migratory impulse that the, the protagonist has, this strange pull, this compulsive desire that, uh, that draws you through the game. Because doesn't that ultimately reflect how we behave as players? We have an intuition, we have an instinct about the path we should take through the game world. The game designer lays things out in such a way that we are drawn through it um, in accordance with that, without ever really even thinking about it. Like, the artistry of good world design, as a game designer, involves putting this stuff together in such a way that the player is simply drawn through it without realising that they're being... I mean, tricked is the wrong word, because it's, you know... Like, if an author puts a good plot in a book, you're not tri they're not tricking you into into reading the book. I think I found this guy previously. I still I'm, I'm still don't really know what the end of his arc is, what his narrative is. I'll admit I'm a little disappointed. I'm pretty sure I messed up a few of the characters, of the character plot lines, because there's definitely the Dark Soulsy thing of meeting the right people at the right place at the right time and doing the right thing being, you know, necessary and vital to actually experience all of their storyline, but I've still, I've still really loved this experience. I think this is probably one of my fave games uh, of the last few years. Perhaps it says something, this migratory impulse thing about not even realizing we're being betrayed. The system is so big that we can't even really observe it. Anyway, Time to try the final fight, which is the only one I haven't done. And then I suppose I'll go do some DLC things. Everyone loves a good bit of dulk. As long as my delicious stew does not burn terribly. Begwa? Excuse me? 
Oh, that reminds me, I should make some emotes for my channel. This kind of seems a lot like the first one, to be honest. Well, maybe it's a little tougher. I wonder if, for these bugs watching these fights, they're doing that thing that, you know, we all do when you're watching MasterChef or Great Bake Off or something like that, where you're just going, oh. Gotten to temper it, that will cause problems. Or whatever. All of these people who clearly don't actually fight themselves. Sitting in the uh, in the stands going like, oh sick in the sword swordsman's stance. That, that's uh, that's not gonna pay off. I really struggle with the diagonal shots, I'll be honest. Okay. Just need to keep an eye out for the goddamn carpet bombing. this guy yeah he took he used to talk to me slam dunking myself into the pond I'm not sure what I'll even win for this the other ones gave me specific things excuse me Hmm. I suppose in addition to Twitch emotes, I should also make a make a a, new, a proper actual banner art instead of just a fight for Geo and the glory of being a fool. Maybe that will give me a new thingamajig. Fight for Geo and a rare metal. Fight for Geo and a charm notch. So I got I got those. Do I do I get them again if I fight again? Can I just get loads of charm notches that way? Probably not. I actually find these fights tougher than the uh, than the final boss or most of the bosses because like they're such an endurance match, right? Like it takes some effort to keep going.
forgetting I can dash downwards now. <laughs> is that a charm I have or is that just something I can do now? Neat. Okay, if I hide in the corner, they can't get me. Oh, hello. This guy's new. Unacceptable. Don't like this. I can't juggle them either, unlike most of my foes. God, there's such a weird arc. Provoking them to jumping straight up is the easy way to deal with these. Oh shit, that was close. Disapprove, 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 disapprove. Oh, fuck off. These are unkillable, aren't they? I guess that's true. Get on the spikes, bastards. Ah, that's it for me. Yeesh. These ones are rough. want to go do the quest stuff. Let's see. This is the this is the DLC stuff, but I think I did that. So I guess I finished that and I need to take it back and hand it in. I'll have one more try at this combat challenge and then I think I'll go do that. And then maybe it will be stew time, baby. I feel like I'm abusing the power of the Dragon Ball Z zoom. It's like gaining the power of teleportation and using it to go to the fridge. Ooh, uh. I mean, I, I have to 100% the game. I, I'll admit, I looked up how to do this because, uh, well, the truth is I got spoiled on it by accident and then I was like, well, I might as well know exactly how it works. And I, I have to pretty much 100% the game to go get the shiny ending, right? Um, I have to go um, get every single uh, talisman, right? 
And I think doing that involves finishing the DLC, so... not my best work. Yeah, because I think you need all the... Oh no, no, it's not notches. It's not the talismans, is it? You need 2,000... Okay, well that was terrible. Okay, let's move on. You need, you need 2,000 dream points, or whatever they're called. And when you have 2,000 dream points, then you can smash the thing open. And I currently have 1,000 dream points. Oh my god, the Queen's Garden! I forgot all about that! That's where I was going! Also, you might be talking about different, different DLC elements than I am, because there's like five of them, aren't there? Down we go. Wait, are there spikes on top of this thing? All of the elevators... Okay, these are the only elevators that don't have spikes on. Some kind of... Uh, legal regulation mandate. I do need to go do the Queen's Garden, I think, didn't I? Don't I? Or did I finish that? You know what would have been smart, actually? If I'd spent some time earlier today reviewing my last stream so that I knew where I'd been and what I'd done instead of being trapped in this this situation. The fool's carbuncle, as they call it. explored the Queen's... Okay, no, I started exploring the Queen's Gardens and most of it's still undiscovered. Okay, so that's... I think that's the last major zone, then. Okay, it's so Distant Village, Queen Station, Green Path. Is Green Path the closest? It might be Queen Station. Let's go to Queen Station. But after that, I don't think there's any major zones left for me to explore, so it'll be down to me to go... Uh... Get as many get as many dream points, probably from ghosts, as I can, and then return. If I go, hmm, I can go via the deep nest. Looks like I can go up and over or down and around. What is that? What does that mean? Hmm. Let's go up and over. Why not? Now, does this person s still have the same dialogue? Yeah. They must be connected to some kind of quest, but they've never said anything other than that throughout the entire game. It's end game. I've got hit points out the I've got hit points out the ass. It's fine if I just uh, take ten million L's on my way. Ho ho, I can swim. I can swim. I can swim in the poison. Fantastic. Yeah, this is yeah, that's right. Yeah, I came through here. 
You know, for a game that's quite interested in the concept of memory, in a sort of a philosoph phil philosophical sense, and, you know, that has a great deal of thematic interest in ideas of forgetfulness and forgetting and, well, not forgetfulness, but like senescence, let's say, the draining away of memory at the end of life because this world should have ended, etc, etc. Um, anyway, it's got a, got a, got a something to that going on. Oh, that's how I get to the other side. Did I find this previously? I must have done. The Overgrown Mound. I've definitely been to the Overgrown Mound. So I found I found the other side of, of this previously, didn't I? Hmm, interesting. Delicious, tasty. Why is there a hole here? I bet I can get I can bet I can get down from above. Or something. Or maybe there was a secret there previously that I already took. Whoops. Yeah, I think I came through here and got something. Well, I cannot be expected to remember what, because you're lucky that I remember that this is a story about a bug. I'm not sure why I'm bothering to come back through here. That's right, I found something here. On well, this dead snail shaman. Or snayman. Oh, I think there's a door as well that I haven't opened. But I think I need something to do with the glowy life juice to get through. So I guess I should try and get as much life juice as possible and then go back there for that as well. Which should be easy because I have a talisman that like... turns all of my life into, into life juice life. No, that's not what I wanted you to do. There we go. Okay, I've been this way because I ate that egg that would have been there previously. Hi. Hello. Ah, tiny warrior. Then you too come to test yourself against that traitorous tribe. A deadly bunch they are that roost within those glades. I'd once stayed well clear of them, but your actions have shown me the truth of it. We must face our fears or be defeated by them. If we both make it through, we can stop swap stories of our adventures. I'll look forward to that. Yeah, buddy, I have no idea why I'm here or what I'm doing, so... Cool. Stay alive, my friend. Whatever you seek and hear, I'm sure that tribe won't look in lightly on our intrusion. Intrusion? Now there's a game I should go back and play again. Huh. These guys look like the Mantis people, but a bit different. I assume they're an offshoot. I wonder if they'll respect me if I kill enough of them like the Mantis people did. Ah, oh, spikes at the bottom, naturally, of course. Sensible. What a, what a hospitable way to welcome people to your green-smelling kingdom. Okay, that's okay. So up is blocked. Up is no. Down it is. Ah, sounds like a challenge room. Oh, they do the throwing thingy. Bosses of them used to do that. I wonder if that's perhaps a skill that these guys 
retained from a more primordial stage of their civilization, I guess. Oh, Kornif has been this way. Hmm, looks like I have to smash that from above somehow, maybe? I forgot how much secret hunting there was in this game. I'll admit I have not missed the secret hunting because I don't particularly like it. Isn't this just the most intriguing place? So many discoveries waiting to be made. We're about to set off ourselves, although we can't seem to agree on which way to head. It's led to something of an argument between us. We should stop squabbling about such petty things. Left or right, which way is best? It should be a simple thing, yet we're always at odds. I do quite like these sort of ghosts with their vague remnant of memory vibes. I like, I like, I kind of like that idea for ghosts in fiction generally. I, I like the idea of it being just a moment of a human life endlessly repeating, just having stamped itself on a, on the fabric of a, hey, wait a second, is that the queen in the background? I think it is. I would love to know more about the king and queen of this place, and just the the deal, and <laughs> the deal with it. Because the first king was the sort of primordial ancient worm, or possibly the king was somebody who took power from a primordial ancient worm of some kind. Which really we'd all do if we could, let's be honest. Okay, that's locked. I will always fall for those things every single time. I'm so bad at spotting them. <laughs> Get spiked, idiot. Now what did that do? Oh, it opened the thing. Right, of course. I am glad that enemies are just as vulnerable to spikes and spike walls as I am. It feels only fair, and I hate it when a game... You know when a platformer has instant death surfaces that are instant death for you, but not for enemies? Just as a general rule, like, it, it, it's fine if there's one enemy that is immune to it or whatever. You know, if it has, like, spindly, spike-proof legs or something. This is clearly also somewhere I've been. Oh yeah, no, I came through this way and I found that it was locked on the other side of here, right? Oh, hey, there's a one of these things. A magic dream tree. Which isn't what they're called, but it is what they are. thousand uh, dream points left to go. It's going to take a long time. Depending on how things go, I may use a... not not uh, not for the dream stuff, but for getting the last of the, the pins, the, the amulets, the talismans, whatever they're called. I might uh, look up a guide on how to do that. And then just do that off stream, and then also off stream... Uh, go get myself a thousand points. Another another thousand points. Depending on how viable it seems to be otherwise. Leaves in splendor. Pale root. I wonder if that... I wonder if they're little tendrils from the world of dreams reaching through into our reality. Uh, well, their reality. Or if they're maybe more like... the seedlings of the world yet to come. 
sprouting in the in the world that was the fallen world this land of lost splendor Oh, these lads are going to kill me if I'm not careful. I've got so much money and nothing to spend it on. I love the dumb folding benches. Huh. Oh, they have music piped in here, like in the, uh... In the trains. Interesting. Let's have a look. What have we got? The compass, dash master, gathering swarm, steady body. I don't know if I need gathering swarm anymore, considering that I, uh, don't think I have any need for money. Like the queen. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, the Queen, you see, never carried money. It was a whole thing. But what, what do I want? Let's see. Collect more soul when striking. Charge, I'm not sure what benefit charging the Dream Nail has, because I don't think it does damage in combat. It just lets me see people's thoughts. And eat ghosts. You know, if I feel ghost hungry. Let's see, um, quick focus. Do you, uh, I could probably get rid of sit quick focus, maybe? Long, what have I got? I've got long nail, I've got heavy blow. Don't care about heavy blow. Quick slash sounds fun though. Uh, let's get rid of quick focus and swap it for quick slash. So that we can hit more faster. -er. Okay. So more reach, faster attacks. Yeah, that seems sensible. That leaves me with one point. Gain soul when taking damage. Sprint faster. I, I kind of want to go with the speed one. Like, I'm all about travelling around at this point. Every, every little helps. Although, that will have to... I, I will have to reorganise my muscle memory yet again. As is necessary. What's that down there? Why have I got a pin on my map? Oh, it's the mask maker who had nothing to tell me. Hmm, dark hole full of hedgehogs. Like descending into depression as a Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Oh hell yeah, I'm like a deadly windmill. A suitable foe for Cervantes hero. make the I just found a secret noise. Oh hey, it's the spiders. I haven't seen these guys for a while. 
Oh! Oh, this actually leads right here, huh? Can I get back or do I have to go the long way? Hey man, what's up? A mask, a face, does it need one, does it not? To define, to focus, to exist. Is that it? I think that's what he said before. Does it know the face that hides beneath? Such remarkable contrast the worm conceived. Hmm. Is he talking about my face? Or is he talking about something to do with the divine assignation of royalty? And what that means? Okay, well, the, I found a shortcut, I guess, to somewhere I don't usually go, I guess. I didn't find any items, I didn't find any stuff. Or even much of a secret area, beyond the fact that there is one. Quite a nice viewing platform there, though. There's such an air of Victorianness to so many of the designs here. I don't know if it's just the, I don't know if it's just the the whole kind of iron and glass aesthetic, the delicious scrolling ironworks, the uh, the iron curlicues on everything. It really does feel like that. Oh, boss time! Boss time! Fighty time is now. Oh, this is a mini boss. Oh, no, it's a fight room. Okay. something talk shit get here. Not that these guys say anything ever. Oh, is that it? Was oh, this a guard room? Oh, actually, I do want to take a quick look at the journal. I want to see what these guys' deal is. They will harass you from afar. Yeah, that's not interesting. Once a member of the Mantis tribe now cast out. Okay, so these are like a subspecies then. I love the names of these things. Fear the death loodle. Well, anyway. Oh yeah, secret room. But why is there a downwards access in here? Oh, that's how I got into this area. Right, of course. It does not have openings on both sides. Why is there a marker for a train station? Here sleeps the traitor's child. I don't know who the traitor is. I don't think I've heard anything of the traitor's child previously. This isn't a pair of evocative nouns that has been assigned to any character I've met so far. I don't think, anyway. What is that? Hmm. Maybe if I come back with a certain item, something can happen. Oh, 
Okay, I think I've explored this place fairly fully. I might have missed one or two... Uh, one or two side corners, depending. But you never know. Oh, hey, it's these guys. Okay, so that's where they're from. Whoops. So that makes this a loodle. A ludicrous name to give a creature. But eventually you have to start respecting it. I think it can dig in the earth for tubers. Or however the meme goes. Ah, maybe this is the traitor's child. This is another mu this is another one of the the iconic mask shapes which are dotted all around the world. But I, I'm not sure if I've seen that one before. I think I recognise the kings and the queens, but this one is unfamiliar, so maybe it is the traitor's child. But if that's the case, who's the question is who's the traitor? And who did they betray? Ha, didn't get me that time. Dumb plant. By the way, acrylic spatter, if you're watching, would you mind going to the kitchen and stirring my delicious stew? This is the advantage to being, incredi being an incredibly small scale streamer, is that like, one of your regulars lives in your house. And if you get your parasocial relationship strong enough, you can come and live in my house too, not really. Ah, oh, hi, hey, how are you? Oh, I hear a sad baby. There it is. Smishy smashy, hell yeah. Oh, shiny. Okay, what's that? I think that's behind the room in which we found a previous the character the other day. Why can I not get through here? Why is there a... Hmm. Maybe I can get there from the other side. Anyway, yes, stew is delicious and I have a great deal of it bubbling in a pot on the stove. Uh, who's telling you that's based? And also... What specifically? a way into that secret chamber, but uh, I might have to come for it from the main side. Oh, but I'm not making them cook stew for me. I cooked the stew. It's been sitting on the pot. I made it. It's it's mine for me. I just want them to stir it so it doesn't burn, because uh, in that case, I'll have to get up and go stir it myself, which is bad radio, as they say. Given as they haven't responded, they probably stopped watching though, so I think I might take a two minute break to go and make sure my stew's not burning. Ow, motherfucker, Jesus, these things are everywhere. Oh, you were here all along. Sneaky. A stealth viewer. When you put a lot of eyes into the word fine, it makes me suspect that it is in fact not fine. These guys are everywhere. How did I get in here? This place is a maze. Amazing. Actually, I do really like this location. Well, if you feel like making me a stew emoji, I will add it to the channel. Or an, a Twitch emote, I guess it would be. I do need to make a set of twi Twitch emotes. I also need to finish making a title card for Resident Evil streaming. I also need to finish making a... Like a... A web page banner. You know, to sound to sound real 1996 internet. Um, for my... For my Twitch and YouTube channels. And I would say... I would say Twitter, if Twitter was not currently in a state of... Fascinating limbo. 
Oh, Resi 1. I, uh, I streamed a few hours of it for Halloween, and it will be the game that I finish after I finish this one. Which, for the record, I did I did beat the final boss with distinct ease earlier today. Um, but there's a secret actual final boss who's more tougher, which I will fight. When I have got 1,000 1, more dream points. Which may take some time. I don't want to fight these guys anymore, they suck. Leave me alone. I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little birthday bug. Okay, there's a resting place down and to the right. Or, you know, I could do that and take a shortcut. Okay, let's have a look. Alright, looks like I didn't miss any major rooms. Well, I'm still not sure what the deal is with the weird dead bug. Which is something I say often when I walk into the kitchen and see all the weird, you know, terrible things that have died on the floor in the night. Where am I going? Up. Up and away. Or were you, or were you asking which... Re re which resi is this? As in, like, which which resi am I playing right now? To which the answer is... Uh, Resident Insect. There we go. It's not a knee slapper of a pun, but it'll do for, you know, l last minute zero notice. Hell yeah, spooky ghost noise. Where are you at? The, okay, it's up from here, so it's up and around, and that leads to the palace, I think. Or the Queen's Palace. Or the Summer Palace? Or the Palace Garden? Or the Garden Palace? Leads to something. I love the crunch noise as you slam your face into the, into the spike wall. I don't think this is where I was thinking of. Where the hell did I find... No, I didn't finish Hollow Knight. I reached the final boss. Um, attempted to beat it a couple times. Went off to do something else. Um, and was going to go back and beat him. And then when I started this stream, I'd forgotten whatever it was I was going to have gone and done. Uh, because that's what happens when you don't stream uh, a game for like two months. And so I just went off and beat the final boss. <laughs> Um, quite easily. Because I'm very good at video games. And also it wasn't that tough. Um, but yeah, so... That leaves a few things left on the table. I need to go and throw myself onto the spikes. A whole bunch of times. For reasons that evade me. Um, and I also need to go get the last of the talisman thingies. And I also need to go finish uh, the DLC I accidentally started. And then there is also the secret, secret, double extra final boss. Uh, who lives uh, inside some kind of dream bubble situation. Which means I need to get 1,000 dream points to go pop his bubble, so to speak. Is that spikes? That's spikes. What you're remembering is probably that I reached the final boss of Hollow Knight, but I didn't. Oh, goddammit. Didn't actually beat it. No! Okay, well, I'm gonna go do something else and come back to this room so I don't die. Oh, really? It's always, it's always so funny when I hear that because it's so rare that I that I quit out. Aha! That's the other side of this thing! Though once our lands, a pale being lays claim to the caverns ahead. 
It may appear benevolent, but does not share our dream. So who wrote these stones, then? Because the Pale Beings, I'm pretty sure, are the... People of the... Oh, it's all the way back there. Okay, I see how it is. Are the people of the, the kings and queens of Hallownest, I think. Is there any more up here? Doesn't look like it. But then there's also the higher beings, and I don't I don't know how these two relate to each other. I suppose one of the things I really appreciate about um, Hollow Knight is that it's willing to do the original flavour Dark Souls thing of just dropping a shit ton of evocative nouns on you and expecting you to put together your own story of what they mean. You know, it. Uh, I was talking earlier about the ways in which I was disappointed by how how closely this game held to the model uh, that the original Dark Souls placed. Like, it literally has the same narrative arc and the same themes. But... Oh, right, I can swim in this stuff now. It's no longer a threat. <laughs> oh, a deeply ingrained muscle memory. Will you ever stop screwing me over? Probably not. Anyway, um... Yeah, I've forgotten what the fuck I was talking about. Oh, I can just, I can just come and have my arm my way across here. Hell yeah. Oh, okay, I guess not. Not all the way. I, did I hear a, no, I didn't hear. I heard the other thing. The little green guys in this area sound almost exactly like sad caterpillars. Greenkin lost, paths overgrown, dream forgotten. I wonder if these have been telling stories all along. I've always been really bad at remembering to hit things with my dream nail. Why is my... why is my... There we go. Wasn't working for some reason. No! Anyway, what I was saying at some point was that it's kind of surprising how little I scrub out on games. What happens to me instead is that I is that my uh, ADHD hyperfocus disappears. I will obsess over a game and I will play it to distraction. Um, but then when brain says I'm done, I'm done, whether I like it or not, I very often find myself going, huh, I'm still super enjoying this game. I really want to see where the plot goes next. I'm enjoying the mechanics. I was just about to unlock a cool new power or whatever. Why can't I play it? And I'll boot it up and I'll say, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it. And I boot it up and I play it for two minutes and I shut it down again. And I boot it up again and I'm like, why am I like this? And then I come back to it the next day and then the same thing happens. It's infuriating. Luckily in the last couple of years, I've got, I've learned to manage it better. But it is a large impediment to all kinds of things. To be honest, I should probably be more proud of myself for how much high quality content I put out, considering how many fucking cards in the deck are stacked against me. It's like, oh, okay, cool. A novel disease has given me permanent disabilities. That's interesting. Can I smash this? This is the other side of a, of a thing. Oh, wait, there's a- aha! I could have opened this all along. But then I've just got, like, weird brain- like, you know, there is a reason why I have this whole, uh, what do you want to call it? Running joke? Bit? Branding decision that I am, in fact, an artificial intelligence instantiated on a, uh, a satellite with a robotic body avatar. Um, created for the sole purpose of playing video games so that you don't have to. Actually, no, that's not the line. Created with the purpose of understanding video games so that you don't have to, which I think is much fairer because my whole deal is the whole, uh, let's do literary criticism to video games thing. Which is also kind of, uh, 
Like it was novel and interesting when I when I decided to start doing that in 2016. But um, we live in the era of the uh, video essay deep dive. Oh hell yeah, bring it, motherfucker. I should have I should have gone found my ghost. Where's my ghost? Oh hey, there she is. Well, not my ghost, my buddy. What's up, buddy? I'm super gonna die here. Okay, I should pay attention to what I'm doing next time instead of rambling about how great I am at games and understanding narratives. Anyway, uh, that's all besides the point. I, I do think I should be... Like, you know, just because I've just because I've released far, far fewer videos than I wanted to in 2022? What fucking year is it? Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm I'm severely rambling at this point. Um but yeah, no. I have a I have an alternative cognition to the way that most people think, thus the robot thing. And I'm eternally frustrated by the resolute refusal. Ah, see, that's I suppose that's the difference then, because I, I like I like things that challenge me. I like to I like to face a challenge and try and uh, try and overcome it. Although only with games, with real life skills, I used to have the I used to have the I have to be good first try thing really badly. Um Now where the hell was Where was the where was the glass thing that I broke open? That's what I need to know. Was it at the top of this tunnel here? It must have been. Anyway, I had a whole thing I was saying, but I have now forgotten what it was because I trod on a spike, and uh, that's really all it takes. But yeah, um... I know it's a little meaningless to be like, have you considered not having the problem that you have? But I would recommend sticking with things and developing some kind of a... Uh, a desire to overcome challenges, because I think it's very satisfying. However, if it's not what you enjoy, uh, that's fine. Go for it. Live your life as you wish to live it. Anyway, I don't imagine anyone's watching who isn't a regular, but... Oh, hi. Two seconds. Ah, this is yeah, this is what I was thinking of. This is where I broke it. Anyway. As I was trying to say, like the Oh god damn it. I'm gonna die here over and over and over until I get to the top. Which is case in point to what I was saying previously. That's gonna be too low again. Uh fuck. But yeah, uh, if you're watching and you aren't already familiar with my whole deal, 
check out my YouTube channel, give me a follow. I'm decent at stuff. And I've got a Discord so that you can see stream announcements because I don't have a regular schedule at the moment because of my aforementioned severe issues of various kinds that I'm dealing with. Um, yeah. All of that stuff's on my about page. But yeah, I, I still I still feel like I haven't quite achieved my, my ultimate goal of bringing sufficient criticism to games as an art form, because like... I've said this before, but I'm just so tired of the fact that, you know, people attempting to defend terrible things in games will often say, games are art, with the implication that they should therefore be above criticism. Or, just simply with the implication that they should be respected. That's what people tend to... Which one was the Grey Prince? Um, I don't know if I fought him or not. It sounds familiar, though. Is that the guy who's like, who's a, a little Hollow Knight guy like you are? Uh, anyway, I, I don't like that um, people say games are art and then absolutely refuse to critique games the way that art is critiqued. Like, there is nothing that boils my piss more severely than games that are hailed for having great writing that actually have utterly mediocre writing. Um... They are simply hailed as, you know, Mass Effect is a schlocky sci-fi novel. Its writing is not that good. The dialogue is not very good. The plot is not very good. It's mediocre. It's not bad. It's fine. It's There's nothing wrong with liking it, like, but it is mediocre. And it's important to like mediocre things. I like lots of mediocre things. Um, but don't say it's great if it's not, and yet... The simple fact that the standards for writing in games is so low uh, means that it means that these things can get away with that because there are genuinely brilliantly written games. You know, there's um, there's your Disco Elysiums, there's your uh, uh, Perfect Tides, is your Longest Journey even was like to pick to pick an old ass example. The Longest Journey was actually very well written. Um, I admit these are mostly narrative type games, but they're all well written. You know, Half Life is excellently written. Like, um, it's not a literary masterpiece, but it has exactly the correct writing for the kind of work that it is. Like, fucking Halo is a well written game. Although they kind of lost it as they went on. Um. But it's like, it's well in the sense of competent, it's not like genius, but it's still good, like. Um, but I just think that things should be... You know. Just think that things should be critiqued as, as art, you know, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be given... Okay, no, here's my thesis that I'm trying to get at. If you are invoking the phrase, this thing is art, in order to say that it deserves to be given respect, then by definition, it must also be given the criticism that that respect deserves, right? Like, as a medium, as a whole, overall. And I belabored, belabored this point a little, a little much. Um, I think you all get what I'm going for here. And it's not like I haven't uh, given this exact rant on previous occasions um, in other in other streams and uh, in my let's plays on youtube but i just think it's important i think it's uh i think it's a whole thing and that was part of the goal of my youtube channel when i started it was to was to attempt to bring literary criticism style um criticism you know which i which i succeed or fail at to various different extents uh over the years Definitely see my, uh... Oh, okay, Traitor Lord. This guy seems tough. Is 
Is he only fighting me? What's the point in having a Dark Souls style buddy in a fight if uh, the antagonist still just, just focuses on you entirely? Yeah, but uh, that's kind of my point. Like, um, Mass Effect is kind of like a schlocky, schlocky sci-fi TV show. But a lot of the people who say games are art and game, like a lot of the people who talk about the writing in that game say it had brilliant writing, like that it was a really well-written game and it, it's not, like. Um, but like, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. I don't, I don't, I'm not like, Mass Effect hater or whatever. I played and loved Mass Effect as a teenager. Um, but like, I don't know. I kind of, I've kind of written myself into a corner with this particular rant because I feel I feel in ways about things, but if you take all of my various rants on this topic in aggregate, I think you get a reasonably rounded opinion. But generally speaking, I see games are art deployed defensively, almost um, self-consciously. When I see people use that phrase, it's usually in the context of being defensive about whether or not games are, you know, artistically valid the way that other media are traditionally seen to be. Which is understandable because it's a very new medium. But but it just it just it just bothers me that the same people who make those make that particular statement tend also not to be willing to critique them in that way. And I think, I think games are good enough. I think games are interesting enough as a medium, you know, which is why I've produced literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of content on my YouTube channel that has, you know, 250 subscribers um, talking about them in that regard, you know? Oh, right, this is the boss room. Oh, I fucked up. Ah. I actually never finished Mass Effect 3, so I can't comment on that particularly. I've always meant to. I've actually always- I have played Mass Effect 1, like, I've completed it more times than almost any other game I've completed, like, I've completed Mass Effect 1, as in 100%ed it, like, five or six times. Because I- whenever I- whenever I face a long trilogy, I have this terrible, like, brain mandate that I have to complete all of it on the same save file. I had this- I have the same problem with The Witcher. Um, because I had the same Witcher save for all the way through The Witcher 1, The Witcher 2, and then into The Witcher 3. And then I stopped playing The Witcher. So if I can't find that Witcher 3 save, I have to start over and play all three games, start to finish, because I'm insane. And I have the exact same issue with Mass Effect. I've completed Mass Effect 1 something like five times, finding all the medallions, finding all the resource sites, finding all the, like, mummified Solarian operatives and their, like, challenge coins or whatever the fuck they have. Um, all of the Matriarch's writings, every single goddamn one of them. Something like five times. Um... Because, you know, my decisions have to be canon. The decisions I made in game one have to be accounted for in game uh, game three, you know? Uh, and then I'll, I'll get halfway through the second game and then I just run out of steam. I mean... Oh, really? See, I actually really like The Witcher games. The Witcher 2 is one of my genuinely one of my favourite games. I think I would willingly put it on my top 10 games. Although I will never make an actual top 10 games list because I really struggle to ga judge games against one another. Like, I will happily tell you 10 of my top 10 games, but there's about 30 games on that list, you know? It's really hard to pick specific ones because I'll always be thinking, well, you know, but that doesn't account for the clever, you know, gameplay and narrative synergy of this other thing that I really liked, but I didn't like the game more than this other thing that was merely, like, 
not revolutionary, but like was perfectly executed, you know? Ah, right, yeah. Well, that, that kind of brings me, that kind of ties into something that bothers me about modern game design, which is the, the every game, the all encompassing. Yeah, Witcher 2 was great, not least because uh, it's the only like medieval fantasy game I've ever played that clearly actually did research into what med medieval costuming was like. You know, The Witcher 2 actually had proper fucking like doublets and hauberks and things like, um, as someone who's low-key a medieval history nerd, I appreciated that greatly because like while the world of The Witcher is not particularly medieval, um, I mean, it's kind of like sociological and tech level are, are sort of like late medieval. Um, definitely pre-early modern, but like, oh, I'm rambling again. I mean, yeah, clearing that low, low bar can be mind-blowing, but like this medium's been around long enough that like it, you know, deserves to have had its, you know, and it is developing now its, its critical landscape, let's say. Um, and I suppose people, you don't really see the Games Are Art crowd uh, showing up in the same way that they used to. Uh, in 2016, even. Like, it used to be very, very common that, that you would see people making, making kind of, nobody said they weren't and yet were yelling about how they are kind of posts. This guy's too big to dodge through. Wait, already? Huh. I think I might... Uh, actually, I think I might end this stream now because my throat's getting a bit sore. So, um, next stream in hopefully a couple days, which is what I always say, and then it always ends up being months because I'm terrible. Uh, and by terrible, I mean physically disabled and psychologically disabled in multiple different ways that make this kind of difficult, and yet somehow I am still tilting at this windmill. Um... But yeah. Yeah, I do, uh, before I go, I do want to say that like, I think bad art is important. I think good art is important. I think mediocre art is important. I think it's important for everyone to have a diverse diet. You know, um, I watch or read as much crap as I do good stuff. Not least because that's how you find the surprising little secret gems, but also because like, you know, enjoying the bad stuff sets you up to enjoy the good stuff. I don't, I don't entirely hold to the, the uh, Ebertian idea that you should always judge everything by what it was trying to do, but I do think that's a really solid baseline, you know? Something that's trying to be a dumb action movie can be an extremely good dumb action movie and a very good use of an hour and a half of your time. Um, is it high art? No, but it, it's, uh, you know, a well-executed piece of low art is better than a badly executed piece of high art any day. But you also need to see some badly executed high art so you know what the good stuff looks like. Anyway, I'm rambling. I've been rambling for ages, which is why I keep dying to this damn boss. You may have noticed that when I'm fighting bosses, I tend to go silent. That's because I'm focusing. But that's everything from me. I have enjoyed our conversations. I will see you guys soon. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.